Everyone knows about the famous face on Mars. This structure has been a topic of much controversy since its discovery by the Viking 1 orbiter in 1976. But have you heard of this strange face on Mars, also known as the crowned face? What about the strange Native American face that can be seen here on Earth? Or what about this face on the moon? Okay, wait, that's, that's literally just three craters. But either way, the planets and moons in our solar system feature an array of strange structures and objects, from faces to monoliths to strange lines, and we'll be discussing many of them in today's video. And not all these are like fake science lore structures, like we're going to be talking about real scientific structures as well. Like what is up with this equatorial ridge on Iapetus, one of Saturn's moons? What is going on there? We'll also be looking at some unique craters and a bunch of other cool stuff, so let's get into it. Let's actually start off here on Earth. So back in 2005, Lynn Hickox was chilling on Google Earth, something that I do quite a bit to be honest. They were looking through Canada, as one does, and they noticed something strange. A weird face feature within the hills. And it really does look like a face feature. Like it's 3D, like you can see the nose and the eyes and the mouth. Lynn Hickox then shared the coordinates on a Google Earth forum and people were like, yo, you're right, what is going on? There's a bunch of news stories about it. It even has its own Wikipedia page now. Oh, I see the face now, right here. Yeah. Oh, well, cool. And since then it has gained the name, the Badlands Guardian. Some people say that the Badlands Guardian looks like a Native American with a headdress. Some say that this road to an oil rig right here represents headphones. The satellite imagery makes it look like a higher hill or a plateau, but this is actually a concave feature. Perhaps it's all just part of an ancient Native American civilization that was in that valley. Perhaps they used an unknown secret technology to be able to terraform the hills as a way to communicate with aliens. Now, it's a completely natural coincidental structure created by erosion. All this can be blamed on a phenomenon known as pareidolia. This is when us humans create faces out of weird things such as clouds or, you know, if you like look at an outlet and it's like, oh, two eyes and a mouth, a face. Yeah, pareidolia. Our brains are just wired to recognize faces. And that's exactly what's going on here. In fact, if we look at other parts of the same valley just a few miles away, other strange face-like structures can be seen. Like this. See the nose, the eyes, and the mouth? What's crazy to me is that this wasn't even discovered until 2005. You would think that maybe a pilot would be like... But no, that never happened. Now when many people see the Badlands Guardian, it reminds them of another face. The face on Mars. The face on Mars is actually part of a larger complex known as Cydonia. And we'll get to that. This face was discovered by the Viking 1 orbiter in 1976. At first, the scientists behind the Viking 1 program dismissed the face-like feature, claiming it was just coincidental due to the unique shadowing. However, 35 Viking orbits later, the same face appeared again. However, throughout the years, technology has changed and it's advanced, and we have sent other orbiters to get a closer look. This was done with both the Mars Global Surveyor and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. And the images they have of the face, yeah. Clearly it's just a mountain. Now one thing that makes the face on Mars a little more intriguing are actually the pyramid structures that are located nearby. This pyramid structure, located right here in relationship to the face, is sometimes referred to as the DNM pyramid. And there's another pyramid structure right here. What is going on? Could this area be the ruins of an ancient Martian city? I wish, that'd be sick. But no, it's not. It's just another classic example of pareidolia. We should still send a rover though, just to get a better look and be sure, because I don't know, that looks like a pyramid. We're not done with faces quite yet. There's another facial feature on Mars located within the Libya Montez region, an ancient high ground near the Martian equator. It was first observed by the Mars Global Surveyor in 2000. You can see the nose, the eyes, and the mouth, and also a crown-like feature. This is why this structure is sometimes referred to as the crowned face. Similar to Cydonia, it can best be seen at specific angles with specific shadowing. 
Not every strange structure on Mars is a face. In 2012, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter used its high-rise camera, captured this photo of strange spirals on the Martian surface near Cerebus Palace within the Elysium Volcanic Province. These are lava coils caused by the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability of lava flowing in different directions, and they can actually be seen here on Earth, specifically on the big island of Hawaii. The high-rise camera also discovered a monolith on the surface of Mars. Remember that 2001 Space Odyssey-inspired monolith that people found in Utah? Well, apparently, there might be one on Mars, too. But don't get your hopes up, because this is just a rectangular-shaped boulder. And it looks even more square due to the low resolution of the photo, aka the pixels are square, making it look even more rectangular than it actually is. And on top of all of that, the sun happened to be at a low angle near the horizon, which extended the shadow, making it look larger than it is. Some unusual objects can be seen on the Martian surface as well. And if you want to see strange things on the surface of another planet, a good place to start would be an ancient, dried up lake bed. And that's exactly where NASA's Curiosity rover is located. And it's seen some weird things. For example, on May 7th, 2012, Curiosity used its mast cam to capture this panoramic view of the East Cliffs, a feature part of Mount Sharp. All was fine and dandy, but wait, zoom in. What on Mars is that? Is that a man-made doorway to a secret alien underground base? Perhaps the reason why we haven't seen any Martians on the surface is because they're all located underground. Well, unfortunately, this doorway is only about 30 centimeters tall, but perhaps a small alien race. Nah, it's just another natural thing that looks man-made. You know, if you take enough photos of a cliff or of the surface of another planet, you're going to find things that look man-made. Kind of similar to the Bigfoot looking thing captured on the surface by the Spirit Rover in 2007. In fact, there's been a ton of strange things that have been captured by rovers throughout the years. So let's just do a quick speed run of some of the more prominent ones. Now this is pretty intriguing. It kind of looks organic, almost like a piece of coral or something. This was discovered by the Curiosity rover in February of 2022. This is actually a lot smaller than you think. In fact, it's smaller than a penny. It does have an organic look to it, but according to the experts, it's just a diagenic crystal cluster, AKA a little mini mineral flower. And this was caused by flowing water. Later that year in June of 2022, the Curiosity rover took this image of strange looking elephant trunks sticking vertically out of the surface. These are actually a type of casting. They form when a smaller, more compact cement-like material leaks into small holes in softer rocks. And then over a long period of time, blowing sand erodes those softer rocks away and you're left with these spikes sticking out of the ground. Kind of like if you had like limestone here on earth with like holes in it and you poured like cement in it, you know, you could sandblast that limestone and it would look something like this. The same process actually happened in this image as well. I know what you're thinking. That's totally a serpent's tail fossil. No, it's not. It does look kind of sketch though, I'll be honest. It's the same sort of thing, a cement-like substance seeped into some rock over time that softer rock eroded away and you're left with this spiny looking scary thing i mean if it was all by itself i'd be a little sketched out but clearly there are other rocks that look very similar near it and around it so you can definitely tell something more natural is happening let's talk about some of the weird features on moons within our solar system starting with this ridge on iapetus so iapetus is saturn's third largest moon and this ridge is actually the third largest mountain range in the solar system it's big it was first seen by voyager 2 but they didn't really know what it was they just noticed some mountains and they called them the voyager mountains however cassini in 2004 got an even better look and what it saw was pretty wild a ridge that was seen only within the dark parts of the moon. So the dark region of this moon is known as Cassini Regino, and the ridge can be seen quite easily in this dark part. But once you get to the lighter part, it's not there. What the heck? What is going on? Scientists actually don't know. And there are a few theories. My favorite theory is that perhaps Iapetus had its own ring system. Yeah, which would be sick. A moon with rings? That's sweet. And over time, those rings, you know, they deorbited and then they kind of hit the equator and then you've got this ridge thing building up that'd be cool it's actually very similar to something known as a shepherd moon so shepherd moons are within saturn's rings 
they kind of like take some of that dust away from the rings and they get like this little saucer looking thing to them. Maybe that's what happened like a long time ago. Or maybe Iapetus even had a sub moon, which is like when a moon has its own moon, a moon moon. And there's other theories like perhaps when it was forming, the way it cooled was really unique and it was spinning really fast. And in the end it had this ridge around it. It's kind of a mystery. Time to send a rover. This would be kind of a fun place to visit, actually. That'd be a cool ridge to check out. All right, let's go from Saturn's moon to our own moon, the moon. Now, back in the day, I used to watch the footage of the astronauts in orbit around the moon, and I'd see different craters and different features, but I always saw these weird lines, and they always intrigued me. I always thought, are those ancient riverbeds? Like, what the heck is going on? Well, these lines are actually known as rills. These are seen throughout the lunar surface. Sometimes they are curvy like riverbeds, and sometimes they are perfectly straight. The curvy lines are known as sinus rills, and they are believed to either be ancient lava flows or perhaps collapsed lava tubes, as they usually begin at extinct volcanoes and extend outwards. One of the rills has actually been visited by humans. Rima Hadley was visited by Apollo 15 in 1971. Here's a photo from above the surface. See this meandering line right here? Well, here is that same line down on the ground. And it's only about 700 feet deep. I mean, if you wanted to walk down that, you probably could. Not all rills are curvy like riverbeds. Some are straight, and some of them, you know, they just go straight through mountains and craters. They don't care what's in the path. And these are caused by depressions between two plates within the moon. So, yeah, pretty cool. Moving on. Now, obviously, the moon is littered with craters, some massive, some super small, but there are a few odd craters that can be quite perplexing, one of them being Ina. Ina is an IMP, or an irregular Mar patch. Now, Ina is also known as the Blue Lake. It was seen by Apollo 17 as it was lifting off. Okay, so what? A blue lake on the moon? What is going on? Well, scientists still aren't exactly sure, but they think it might have to do with outgassing. It looks like some of the regolith is missing from this patch of the moon. So regolith is like the soil of the moon. It's the powdery substance, you know, and it seems to be missing in patches around this area. Perhaps it was a low-lying surface volcano that, you know, and the regolith went all over the place. Maybe some other form of outgassing. I don't know. Another lunar mystery. Let's move on to the islands of Titan. This right here is one of Titan's most prominent lakes located in the North Polar region known as La Giamea. Now this isn't water, this is actually liquid methane. And this photo is stunning. It's not a true color image, but it's still crazy that this is not on Earth. Like look at the rivers. Like you even had this little crater right here. Anyway, this little section of the shoreline has proven to be quite enigmatic as it has changed and evolved throughout the years. Scientists have called these little sections magic islands, and they believe them to be some sort of material floating on the surface of the lake. Kind of like the way pumice floats on water here on Earth, or like moss. It's pretty intriguing because it could be an organic material. We have sent so many rovers to Mars, it's time to send one to Titan for real, like one that can actually travel around and stuff. Titan is probably the most interesting moon in our solar system. Another moon worth mentioning is Mimas, Saturn's smallest round body moon. In fact, it's actually the smallest round body object in our solar system. Smaller celestial bodies just don't have enough gravity to condense into a round shape, and Mimas is just barely big enough to be round. But it's definitely pretty rough looking. What's so fascinating about Mimas is this 4 billion year old massive crater right here. This is Herschel Crater, named after Sir William Herschel, the man who discovered Mimas. This large crater makes the moon look slightly like the Death Star. The scientists find this crater quite unusual because they assume such a large impact would have shattered the entire moon. And while it didn't shatter the moon, it definitely caused a lot of strain. Like, do you see these little rough lines right here going across Mimas in this image? Those may potentially be fractures caused by the impact. Speaking of lines across moons, let's talk crater chains. Sometimes you see craters on an astronomical body scattered throughout, and sometimes you see them in a long line. These are known as crater chains, and they are seen on many astronomical objects all throughout the solar system. They are often caused by a large object being broken up into smaller objects by strong tidal forces before impact. Like for example, comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 which impacted Jupiter in a line in 1994. Sometimes tidal forces only break larger objects into two pieces, so you get double impact craters, like this interesting looking one on Mars. 
Another cause of crater chains, especially on the moon, are larger impacts strong enough to create a line of crater ejecta that then returns to the surface as a series of secondary impacts. You can see this very clearly on the Martian moon Phobos. See these lines stretching across the surface away from this massive crater? These are the secondary impacts of the ejected material from the first impact. Speaking of Phobos, there's a strange boulder on its surface known as the Phobos monolith. Now yes, it does kind of just look like a large boulder, but it's still a bit puzzling to scientists. It is believed that this is a foreign object that somehow got lodged into the site of Phobos without leaving an impact. Scientists still are not sure how it got there, and there are actually many proposed missions to further investigate it. It's just another solar system mystery. Well, there you have it. Those are some strange structures throughout our solar system. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.